Welcome back to the Reverbian Podcast. My name is Jimmy, contrary to what I said in a previous recording attempt, <laughs> and I'm joined by... <laughs> Uh, what's your name <laughs> i'm sean i'm sean you should know that because you, th you thought you were me last time yeah. so you should know what my name is my head went to places that, that it issue. shouldn't have gone to anyway we're switching <laughs> roles for this podcast we, we are not well we kind of are i am now jimmy i am now jimmy we're changing up the podcast format a little bit starting from this podcast we are still focusing on a topic but it will be a shorter segment that won't take up the whole of the podcast unless they're like there's a future event that you know would would uh warrant, warrant a uh, longer podcast form but we will be from now on doing weekly roundups of any news that we found that interests us or that we think is significant in some way so yeah normally one piece of information that we can't do a long format section about but we think it is good to be brought up things that we've seen things to be excited for sort of thing yeah but maybe don't have much of a discussion yet discussion area but it's still good it's still like in our realm of what we would not usually talk about yeah so our, our main question this week well our main topic is more so to do with the super bowl and uh we'll talk a little bit about that but we'll get there when we get there where the format's going to be starting off. We'll talk about some TV and movie news first. That's stuff that we found out that might be interesting. Then we'll move on to video games. Then we'll move on to sport. And if we find anything else that doesn't really fit into those genres, we'll, we'll, we'll find, we'll, we'll, we'll slot them in somewhere. But uh, we will start off with, since we're doing TV and movies, we should probably start off with the newest news which was the announcement that pedro pascal and bella ramsey bella ramsey from game of thrones and pedro pascal from wonder woman and the mandalorian will be and game of thrones and game <laughs> yep. uh, was he in game of thrones oh yes yeah yeah it was the wow. viper yeah wow he literally got his, he head, got crushed. his head crushed yeah <laughs> big moment crazy <laughs> Well, you know uh, what? He's been in so many things that I've just forgot. It's so many years ago. Wow, Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, yeah, they they will be starring in the Last of Us TV series based off the video game Last uh, series, The Last of Us, as Joel and uh, Ellie. Uh, yeah, not much else to it. They just got announced. I think um, Neil Druckmann, is, who is like one of the lead directors. Uh, um, uh, Naughty Dog who create the games is running it alongside the creator of Chernobyl I believe if yes. I'm not yeah. wrong yeah, I, I'm going to try and find his name while we do this quickly uh, while you do that it's just that's what, it, this is great casting Craig, isn't Craig it? Mazin, Pedro Pascal is, is amazing yeah Sorry. Yeah. That's, his name was Craig Mazin or Mazin okay that's it. Yeah. continue yeah uh, like this is great casting it like Pedro Pascal's amazing and everything that he's in, and Bella Ramsey was am amazing in Game of Thrones. Like, mm -hmm. um, as uh, Liana Mormont, she was she was ridiculously good, um, and played that part really well. Uh, so be so exciting to see what they do in this. Hopefully, the right hand doesn't got Pedro Pascal them over. in Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, if the if I think the, I've wiped um... everything from Game of Thrones in my mind. <laughs> That ending just ruined it for you. <laughs> I um, didn't even mind the ending as much as other people, but yeah, it, yeah. it's forgettable. Anyway, they're yeah, gonna. The last of us. Um, say, I was gonna say, let's hope the writing doesn't screw them over. But let's be honest, if it's being done by the person who created uh, Chernobyl, that was amazing in itself mm -hmm. as well. So there shouldn't be any issues there. Yeah. Um, so there were just some people complaining that um, Bella Ramsey doesn't look enough like Ellie, which. If you're one of those people, fuck off. Who gives a shit? Who cares? <laughs> so at the end of the day, you need a young actress who's able to hold the role and fulfill a big role because this is a huge um, video game that's been made into a TV show. Uh, sorry, it's TV, isn't it? Or yes, film? it is a TV show. 
yeah. I'm pretty sure. So that's what I got right. It's like at the end of the day, it's virtually impossible to then find someone who matches a video game character. I swear. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I mean see, sometimes... Pedro Pascal doesn't look like Joel, so I don't see people crying about that. <laughs> but yeah, but they're, they're great castings. Like in, but... They're great castings. Like people need to remember that it's been a couple years since Bella Ramsey filmed Game of Thrones, so she's a little bit older now, surprisingly, and she might have changed. I don't know about you. She might look a slight. And bit also, different. and also, she's an actress. Where we are today, they can. <laughs> They could make a person look very different to how they are, and they don't even like, need to. They, they don't use make so they don't need to. But if they wanted to, they could do all the makeup stuff they wanted to mm -hmm. to change her appearance in a certain way to make her look more like the character from the video games. Probably won't, but they do have the ability to do that. So it's kind of a it's, it's a void argument. It's yeah. a stupid argument. It's just people crying for no reason. Wait until they I don't find know why out anyone that, um... will be with it. Wait until they find out that the voice actress for Ellie looks nothing like her either. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we'll we'll move on yeah, really. to some kind of related news to do with the Mandalorian. I'll let you take it away, Sean. Yeah, this is that um, Gina Canaro is no longer part of the Mandalorian after some very questionable uh, tweets. We won't go into the tweets. We we won't talk about them in detail, but. It's been a long time coming, Let's say, I think. She made some... Uh, what's she the compared, word for it? She compared certain groups of people to another yeah. group of people Which is from a long time ago. Nowhere ahead. near as close. <laughs> yeah. A certain group of people who faced mass persecution. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So... so... So anyway, we'll move on. She won't be in season three, as far as we know, in any capacity at all. And... Which is a shame because she's a good yeah. actress and is good in it. But we don't know. At if, the end of the day, we you don't know cannot if expect will be to keep your job. Yeah. If uh, yeah, you cannot expect to keep your job if you do something like that. We'll have to see <laughs> what that means for season three of The Mandalorian. Yeah. Uh, have we got any other big TV or movie news? On your list, um, or, uh... not that I can think of. Oh, so we one. have one division out at the moment, but oh yeah, that's I, I think not really talk about that until no, I haven't seen it's it all out. I think as <laughs> you haven't seen, I have. I've been keeping up with it week on week. I, um, I've been but spoiled, I think, but um, it's, yeah. I think it's probably better just to wait until all of it's out, then we can. Uh, yeah, I know. especially I, I, because I'm aware of the I wait. <laughs> especially with the first few episodes being a bit slow, that mm -hmm. there's still a lot to unfold in this. That. Yeah. There's not much to go on. Yeah. The, uh, but apart uh, from that, I think... The, I the think Expanse just wrapped its uh, fifth season, which has been pretty good. I, I've only, I haven't only i seen the last two episodes, so I can't comment there, but The Expanse is an awesome TV show, so if you haven't seen it, go see that. Uh, you can watch all five seasons on Amazon Prime. Uh, as an Amazon Prime video, I should say. But yeah, we'll, we will uh, move I, on. I think I did see, actually, just quickly, I don't know if it's definite, but uh, season three of You on Netflix, I believe, is being released in November. I'm oh, sure I saw that. Okay, fair enough. fair enough. I don't know if it definitely did, but I remember seeing it somewhere. So. Well, if they didn't, blame Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Video game news, and we will start off with... The announcement for the release date of the Mass Effect Legendary Edition Trilogy Remaster, which will be out, I believe, May 14th, 2021. So soon, as a big Mass Effect fan, I am very excited for this. Even though it's not a... I, I wouldn't say it's not a complete remake. It's not even like... It borders the line of remaster in a way. I'm just happy the games are coming to current gen consoles, so I can play them again. <laughs> um, they they announced that only one thing from the original trilogy would not be included, and that is DLC for the first game uh, under Pinnacle Station. That's the name of the DLC. It won't be included because the source code uh, got corrupted many many years ago and a separate company made the dlc and bioware went to them to try and get the source code but all they could get was corrupted data and it would have taken them a very long time to have remade that 
especially considering like they'd have to work on the old engines and yeah they might as well have remade the game at that point and then remaking the game would take years so yeah that may 14th be on the lookout if you're a mass effect fan if you've never played the trilogy before i'd recommend picking this up even if you have played the trilogy i've played the trilogy about three four times through <laughs> and i'm happy that i'll get be able to play it again so yeah may 14th that is our first bit of news anything else sean done um we can move on to so there's a rumor i say rumor it's come from charlie intel which is if you don't know is a very reputable uh source when it comes to call of duty news um and so we had the new zombies map out last week uh and now it looks as if there's going to be a new uh mode called outbreak which is looking like it's going to be an open world style zombies mode in uh, black ops cold war nice which is quite interesting yeah uh, if it have, is is quite exciting i have one more bit of news i know we've passed the segment but i literally just discovered this because i just got a message from someone that okay. we may potentially be getting a trailer for the Justice League Snyder Cut on the 14th of this month. Oh, so yeah. Well, I, I can't believe we forgot to mention that. Because we had pictures come out, didn't and we? We had pictures come out of uh, Jared Leto's Joker, like the new design. I personally think it looks really good. I'm glad they changed it up. And I'm glad they're bringing him back because people were too quick to judge this man's performance in a movie that shouldn't have had anything to do with him and that he was only in for about 10 minutes so let's see what he can do i think we spoke about it before as well yeah. that i think it was just a case of people were so or a lot of people kind of like grew up with the joker of heath ledger and that's the style of joker they knew yeah. this was very different and they weren't i don't think they were ready for it or prepared for it so and we're gonna it, get something it, it different again kindly to it the thing about so, the Joker is there he comes in different forms. <laughs> so here we go. We'll, we'll be seeing more. We might see some footage of him on the 14th. That is, I don't know if that's confirmed or not. It's literally just come to my ears. But be on the lookout. I wouldn't be surprised. It's coming out soon anyway. So a trailer wouldn't be that surprising. But yeah, uh, was there anything else in video game news? It's kind of video game related i was gonna go my ahead. favorite section will be with the pokemon section yep I'll because let you go ahead it, it is a video game but this news specifically isn't about the video games there's a couple of things so i'll start off with so today pokemon company uh announced that there's a collaboration with post malone happening on pokemon day 27th crazy, of crazy, february crazy crazy a, a concert with post malone and pokemon <laughs> so God and knows what's going to happen there. I saw that Katy Perry is going to be involved as well. Yeah, Katy Perry. She was the first one. So uh, if you didn't know, well, I'm sure we've mentioned it before, uh, this year is the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. Um, and the Pokemon company came out and said that they were doing a lot of uh, different collaborations with different people and different companies. Uh, they previously announced that they are working with Katy Perry with some music for the 25th anniversary. Uh, they also have named different companies, so they're doing a collection with Levi's. Um, another thing I'll come on to just after this is uh, McDonald's. They've also partnered with those, and Post Malone is the latest one to be announced. Yeah. Another one on the music side. Okay, nice. So not there's not really much information at the moment on what it will be about or what will be involved in it, but yeah. If you like Post Malone or you like Pokemon, if you like Pokemon, the date should be in your diary already. But 27th of February, Pokemon Day. See what's going on there. Um, I'm going to the McDonald's one because I mentioned it already. Is that uh, so for the 25th anniversary, they've printed some uh, special 25th anniversary cards, which are being distributed in America in uh, McDonald's Happy Meals. They've uh, previously, uh, I don't think they've come out yet. They're also doing ones in cereal. Um, but I don't think they've been released yet. But as of the 9th of February, uh, in Happy Meals in McDonald's, you will get a pack of four Pokemon cards with each Happy Meal, which has led to many, many adults going to McDonald's and buying a lot of Happy Meals uh, just to get these Pokemon cards. Because if you didn't know, and that's the final bit of Pokemon news, is that uh, 
Pokemon cards are in short supply at the moment <laughs> uh, because of a whole host of things. Literally nowhere has them. Um, Sounds very so similar to a certain game console. Shortage. Yeah, actually, I have news about that as well. If you haven't seen that, I'll get oh, to that after. No. Um, yeah, so there's been one only because I follow my quite like his content. Um, a drive, a Pokemon YouTuber, mm-hmm. had a lot of backlash on the day they released as he went out and bought 100 Happy Meals uh, to collect these cards. Um, he ended up deleting all of his tweets about it and putting up an apology. Uh, did he, but he had one? stated, yeah, so he'd previously so. He went and bought them, and basically, um, he didn't just rock up to the shop and go, "I want a hundred Happy Meals." He did. He split them about different areas or different uh, shops around the, the area near him, um, and also he donated the food to charities, like to homeless charities and people who needed the food. Right. Um, uh, and then also, he wasn't just he wasn't getting these cards to sell on, which is the main the main issue. I feel around this is that a lot of people are buying these cards knowing they're in short supply knowing that only in america and that people will want them that they're going to then try and sell them on for a lot of money hmm. scalpers um, <laughs> yeah which is a big issue at the moment in everything yeah um so yeah so he did that he's also uh giving some of the cut the packs away uh to his followers um but yeah he he did have to come out and apologize for that and which part of me is like do your own thing like they're there to be bought at the end of the day uh you can do it and it's not like he's going out there to make a profit on them he's not and he's done a good thing with it because he's also donating the food to people but at the same time it's a kid's game like the card game is made for kids Mm. and by doing that you could potentially be stopping kids from getting these cards which is a lot I think a lot of people are realizing this with the whole scale issue at the moment is that although there is a big adult base for these, where like the collectors, at the end of the day, it's, it's a kid's game. And at the moment, children cannot access these cards. There's no way they can buy them because they're being bought up by everyone. So I think that's yeah, just I'm, an issue with distribution yeah. more than anything. Like if you were aiming this at the kids directly, make more. You know, they don't have to be the best Pokemon cards in the world. You can just make prints. You know, kids aren't going to care if they're the most lucrative cards in the world. They just want a card. They just make This prints. is then <laughs> my final bit. Yeah. Is that um, the Pokemon company did actually make a... Here we go. An update on the Pokemon trading card game, which they tweeted yesterday. Uh, saying that we're aware that some fans are experiencing difficulties purchasing certain Pokemon TCG products. By certain, they mean all, um, <laughs> due to very high demand. In response, we are reprin- reprinting impacted products at maximum capacity to ensure more fans can enjoy the Pokemon TCG. So they basically come out and said that the recent sets, so I should imagine this is Vivid Voltage, which is the last main set, uh, Shining Fates, which is the special set, which is coming out uh, next Friday on the 19th. Uh, so they'll be reprinting those as there's a huge shortage of Shining Fates. Um, I won't go too much into it, but basically here in the UK, there's only one supplier and that one supplier uh, currently only has 6% of the order they put in uh, for all of the Pokemon cards that brought in to go to every shop. So uh, that includes your big uh, Pokemon card online stores like Magic Madhouse and Chaos Cards. That includes your smaller ones. Um, It includes your local uh, shops uh, where they hold uh like tournaments or they sell cards and also includes your supermarkets or your tesco's your sainsbury's who sell pokemon cards out of all of those all of their orders only six percent has been brought to the uk um and they've also said that they're increasing production on the next sets to come out so that will include uh the battle styles and whatever's coming after they haven't announced that yet in english yet they have in japanese we don't know for english but yes they pokemon have acknowledged that there is an issue and they are doing something to rectify it by maximizing their printing, which, as you said, that could lead to more ish- more um, faults in the printing, I think, because they'll probably yeah. take less time in checking. Um, so, which, again, as you said, it's fine for children if they want the cards to play with. No one cares about condition. The problem will be when you get to the adult collectors who want your PSA-graded cards that if the print run isn't good, they're not going to be 
it might not have great centering or something like that. There may be marks, but that's the only way they're going to solve the issue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else on that front, or um, well, just back. To, it's still in the um, video games and to do with short supplies. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Sony did actually come out and tell us why there's a shortage of PlayStations. Uh, I've heard some like little bits over the past few weeks, but I'll let you say what they said. Yeah, it was just mainly that um, because of COVID, they're basically struggling to get all the materials they need to make the yeah. PlayStations. I knew it was a material Play- shortage. but Yeah, so that's what it's come down to, because obviously it's basically been impossible to uh, get a console uh, since its release. Uh, two reasons, mainly. Well, one, because of this, that they don't have, or there is a shortage in material, so they can't probably can't make as many as they would like to. But then also because what uh, stock they are able to send out to be bought uh, is being picked up by scalpers, yeah. <laughs> Which is always fun, especially when they announce a uh, a drop on at like 9am or something and someone's got it the, the morning before because they've somehow got into the system and ordered hundreds yeah, of... It's crazy. I don't understand how it works, how these yeah. computer systems work that they use on these bots, but it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things where it's it's amazing what they can do, but it's amazing in such a bad way that it's <laughs> just so frustrating. And yeah. the, again, it comes down to end of the day, uh, I'd argue that video games are probably aimed more towards children Obviously, you have your 18 plus games. It's for everyone, but video games are largely for children. You're taking gifts away from kids, scalpers. Yeah. You're taking kids away from gifts. Wait, you're, <laughs> you're taking, taking gifts, gifts away from, kids kids. Away from gifts. You're taking. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they are. Maybe they're scalping kids. You never know. <laughs> yeah, so these scalpers are going through. They're buying them, trying to sell them on for more, and. Obviously, there's probably in the past Christmas a lot of children that were hoping to get a new PlayStation or an Xbox. Yeah. It's not as bad for Xbox, I think, because people don't really want them. Sorry, Microsoft, but your console shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that they weren't able to get them, and the only way is basically to not give in to these scalpers who are, pay- who are charging more for them on eBay or whatever. Yeah, make yeah. them lose money. There is there is a gen- genuine reason for the shortage. It's not just. Uh, yeah, people need to calm down it. with their blame against Sony and remember we're living in a pandemic. Oh, like yeah. they, like the... they probably should have more. Like they probably should be trying a little bit harder. I won't deny that, but <laughs> But in the day, in the case of safety, like they probably can't have as many people in their factories. They probably won't there won't be as many people about to be able to make deliveries for things. Like Production is just lower on everything at the moment because of it, and we're not out of it, so it's not going to change anytime soon. Despite what Americans might think, we're not out of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, before we move on to sport, I have a little segment that I'm going to go over here, which is just a few highlighting a few video game releases uh, for February that you might want to be on the lookout I'm not going to go over everything, but I'm going to go over some that might be popular or some that I'm interested in. So actually coming out tomorrow, I believe, is Super Mario 3D World and uh, the Bowser's Fury expansion for the Switch, which is uh, a remake of free, uh, Super Mario 3D World, but on the Switch. <laughs> uh, that that could be interesting. I know um, the Bowser's Fury thing has caught a lot of people's eyes, so order it now i'd say if you really want it because i believe they're not going to have it on sale for that long i i think they're doing what they were going to do with the super mario 3d all stars um which had uh super mario sunshine super mario 64 and super mario galaxy where they're only available till march i could be wrong but be on the lookout if you want that go get it uh, one that I'm going to be getting is Persona 5 Strikers, which comes out on February 23rd for PC, PS4, and Switch. Um, I have loved Persona 5, Persona 5 Royal. Persona 5 Strikers is a sequel to that, but is different. Um, has a gameplay more similar to the uh, Dynasty Warriors series, series, Hyrule Warriors as well. Stuff like that, closer to that. 
but it still has very much focus on story and has been getting good reviews so be on the lookout for that if you're interested and one more i will say is bravely default 2 which the first bravely default came out on the 3ds was an interesting game uh, not something i really played that much of but it is a game that could it is a jrpg has its own fan base i know bravely default was met with like acclaim when it first came out so if you're looking for the sequel it comes out on switch on february 26th so yeah that is that is just a little bit of a roundup of some of the games that uh, might interest people coming out soon but we will move on to sports right now so sean take it away um let's i'll start with the six nations because that's a nice quick one mm -hmm. uh the six nation returned last weekend um rugby competition for anyone that might not know there could be people out there um between as you guessed it six nations italy france england scotland wales and ireland uh first game was france italy where france looked to be back uh some of their best um the past few years they haven't really performed as well as they could uh in six nations but they beat italy 50 to 10 um so italy i just yeah not great um <laughs> they've not been good for the past few years but france did look really good uh england the reigning champions uh lost their opening game to scotland uh much tighter game of 11 6 uh scotland looked good to be fair to them england just wasn't quite clicking um giving away a lot of penalties uh yeah they just a tight game tough to watch as an england fan personally uh and then on the sunday uh wales beat ireland uh 21 to 16 so it'd be interesting to see how the rest of this goes uh with england starting the back foot uh so it could make it more difficult for them to try and uh regain the championship but keep updated in the future not much to say about it to us only the three games so just yeah. in case you are a rugby fan and you're interested and for some reason you missed it doubt you would if you're a rugby fan but there we go right. now, <laughs> let's, now let's talk about that cunt Mike Dean uh, oh uh, yeah oh yeah uh, where, where should we start here where, where do you want to start from so uh, we've moaned about VAR before on this podcast in football we, we won't um, go on too much of a rant, but... <laughs> no. Uh, basically, it was, was it last weekend? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it must have been last weekend. Um, there was a very controversial red card given in a certain football match and was given by Mike Dean. Um, Mike Dean obviously being Premier League referee. Um, I think in recent years, he's become a bit more of a comedy figure, hasn't he? Than... He's, he's like trying to be the poster boy i guess like getting up in the fans you know d dancing in the crowds uh trying to be the guy who gives away the penalties in last minutes just because you know just for banter um, so there's there's plenty of clips out there of like compilations of uh things he's done in games where it looks like he's celebrating for certain teams when he's given decisions and just some of the things he's done and it just this one is just a very weird decision that he sent off a player for literally nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and what's then even worse is that, wait, is the fact that he spent about two or three minutes staring at the screen watching this. And you can clearly see that it's not, who actually was it? Sorry, who got sent off? Su uh, check, right? West Ham? Was it That's West Ham? it. Yeah, yeah Su check for, for West Ham. He's basically, he's accidentally elbowed the defender as he's mm -hmm. trying to move away in the face like he wasn't even looking at the player there was nothing malicious to it at all my dean has then spent what two or three minutes looking at this screen and dennis decided to send him off he wasn't originally sent off he's overturned the decision to send him off and then that red card decision later then wasn't overturned yeah, because they can review decisions after the game, um, because obviously the red card leads to a ban, um, so they can review it and go. Actually, it wasn't. It's no longer. Um, he's not going to receive the ban. He can play. This didn't happen, and it's seemingly for nothing. And this came a week after uh, David Luiz was also sent off for literally not a challenge. 
he, yeah. was, <laughs> he was literally sent off for not touching and, a player. And he didn't get um, his red card uh, card rescinded, but Zuchek did, which was weird, in my opinion. I mean, Zuchek yeah. didn't deserve the red card, and it's good that he got rescinded, but the David Luiz one not getting rescinded was weird. Uh, Suchek just seemed... did play because um, West Ham played United in the FA Cup and he was allowed to play that game because the red card uh, got taken away. But yeah, I like that. It just seems that recently that VR was brought in and it's supposed to have helped the referees. But it appears that it's like it we've just been seems saying, to be human error. It seems to be making the referees worse. Yeah. But I feel like we weren't seeing these type of decisions before. And then all of a sudden now we're seeing these really weird ones that in any in normal circumstances, you wouldn't even look at them and like give them a debate. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of just ruining the game a bit of the players are getting sent off for no reason. Nothing challenges are now being looked at and made out as if they're big leg breaking uh, challenges. And it's just getting a bit ridiculous now. Uh, but on the other side of this, uh, Mike Dean has actually uh, been and his family were receiving death threats because of this, which is just way too far. Yeah, no, like, nothing, why nothing warrants a death threat. Like... Nothing warrants a death yeah. threat. Does, does he deserve so, to be um, criticised for his decisions? Yeah. Does he deserve death threats? No. Stop. Stop that. <laughs> especially when it goes to his wife and kids who literally, they have nothing to do with this. Yeah, that, like, that's they didn't make the decision. Good. Like, why should they fear for their life and be scared that something might happen to them because of this? It's it's ridiculous. Why people think it's acceptable to do that, I have no idea. Yeah. Well, we, we, we won't linger on this too long. Just know there's, a, there's, there's some big stories to do with that. Um, something we will talk about, though, uh, football-related, is unless you had something else to say. Did you have anything else to say, really? Uh, not about that, no. Right. Football in general, we can move on to something else. I, I to say, but... was going to say that we just had the FA Cup sixth round draw, uh, which I okay. Open. Did you see? I did not. I just had the page open for the fixtures that happened. Okay. Well, we have. I I will go through them. The first game is. Everton versus Manchester City. So two high ranking teams in the table going at it. And we got Bournemouth versus Southampton. We got Leicester City versus Manchester United. So also a pretty much second and third place uh, battle. And then we have Barnsley or Chelsea versus Sheffield United. So clearly Barnsley are going to be facing Sheffield United there. But it is currently nil nil, uh, and it's one minute off of half time. Yeah, yeah. so you never know. You there is a chance. Uh, so is, I thought, I thought for I'd me, it that. is a, for once. Man City weren't given the easiest draw. It's amazing they didn't get Bournemouth <laughs> um, <laughs> or Sheffield. <laughs> now Sheffield will beat them. Sheffield are, are uh, giant killers. Um, that's the excuse I'll be telling myself. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that's that's the FA Cup draw at the moment. Uh, I'll let you, I guess, read off some results if you wanted to do that, or we can just uh, move on yeah. to Yeah, well, okay. so not a huge amount, just obviously, so we had on Tuesday, uh, we had Bournemouth beating Burnley 2-0, uh, a little bit of an upset there, after Bournemouth now in the Championship this season, uh, Burnley haven't been in great form though, to be fair, so, yeah, uh, Man U beat West Ham 1-0 after extra time, because uh, of the McSauce. Uh, coming on, source. which led to this isn't news or anything, but it led to a great clip from um, E. Goldridge. That's amazing. Did you see that? Which one? Um, so when McTominay was subbed on, he was he, he does his live streams, doesn't he? Where he basically comments on the game that yeah. is going on. Um, he basically complained oh, you said Mark that. Goldbridge. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He complained that McTominay was coming on, going, "Why are you swapping a defensive midfielder for a defensive <laughs> midfielder?" And then he scored, and then immediately turned to, oh, I told you, I told you, he's a box-to-box -box, uh, midfielder. If you let him run in the box, he'll go and score. And all of a sudden, just <laughs> as soon as he scored, it changed from, oh, it's a shit decision to bring him on, to, oh, he's amazing. He's, I've always said that. Well, Gold, Gold Goldbridge is a bit of a character. He's not, he, uh, he's not exactly like, he puts it on a lot. 
he, he's definitely yeah. he definitely does it because he knows he gets it gets used. Oh, have, yeah. have you seen yeah, that was just the end funny. of the Everton United game when um, Calvert Lewin scored? And he slams the desk so hard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it uh, hurts me, but, yeah. but also it was funny. So then the Wednesday fixtures, uh, City obviously beat Swansea with their yeah. nice easy draw in that round. Uh, Leicester beat Brighton, Sheffield beat Bristol, and in probably one of the most exciting games we've seen in a long time, uh, Everton beat Tottenham after extra time 5-4, which uh, led to... Um, uh, some old quotes being dug out uh, of Jose Mourinho of um, previously when he turned and said that um, if in a father side game in training uh, it was ever 5-4 he would um, tell them to go inside and sort their shit out uh, because they're playing that bad defensively never mind in a 11 side game <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite funny but yeah and then currently tonight uh, Southampton beat uh, Wolves 2 0. Wolves carrying on their slump of bad form and half time Barnsley nil, Chelsea nil as we're speaking. So who knows what that'll be? Yeah, it's we're finished by the time that game's finished. So <laughs> one of those um, two will be in the next round. Yeah, uh, who knows just who? listed who, who they'll be playing if they are. But for now, we'll we'll move on to our main topic, which is Boy, the I just super... wanted to say. Okay. <laughs> I'm surprised you missed out on this because you get to slag my team off. What did I miss? So out basically, on? over the weekend, it's fair to say that Liverpool will not be uh, retaining the title this season after uh, losing to Manchester City. They are now oh, ten points oh, behind. Oh yeah, four one. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they are now ten points behind City. Who well, are you're just so table. forgettable we now. So a game in hand. Oh, you're off. just so forgettable now. <laughs> so I just, I just didn't think about it. No need to think about it. <laughs> but no, yeah, you, you did get scored. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely um, got. I believe score. City now have the best rec, like the best uh, continuous winning record in all competitions by an English team. I think that's right with fifteen. See, Liverpool previously had the record for the Premier League, mm-hmm. uh, which obviously came to an end. Uh, but <laughs> Man City's in all competitions, so that's the league, Champions League. Uh, FA Cup, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, they're now five points clear of uh, Man United with a game in hand. And let's be honest, yeah, we can't. I, personally, from here, I can't see anyone catching them. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah, you should never give up. But it's just how City are. They've been amazing this uh, this recent run of form. And unless something happens to uh, Ruben Diaz, um, they're, they're <laughs> not in any trouble. <laughs> yeah, just remember, unless something happens to Ruben Diaz. Remember that players on the pitch, Ruben Dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like something bad needed to happen to Van Dyke earlier in the mm. season, and that happened. <laughs> Obviously, we do not condone the um, deliberate no, no, no. leg breaking of uh, the players that, on this podcast. That was just a, that was just a comedic <laughs> com- comedic uh, moment from us. Don't worry. Um, anyway, Super Bowl. We, we've we've ruined the element of surprise. Super Bowl. Wait, it wasn't really an element of surprise because we talked about it before. But, according to Americans, the greatest show on earth. Um, <laughs> and according to that, Americans, yeah. the world champions. Yeah, world champions. <laughs> In an American sport played by Americans. Anyway, we love the NFL, so we can't complain. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, defeated the, uh, destroyed the Kansas City Chiefs, I should say. <laughs> I can't believe our recording failed. 31 to 9. <laughs> and, I can't believe our recording failed. <laughs> and we did predict the, uh, the Bucks to win, so... Technically, in that game where it worked, it was a thrashing as well. <laughs> yeah, we it was literally, a fa- and we I thrashed Sean. Well, yeah. predicted this game. I'm pretty and we sure. We put the video out. Holy, did we get what? What was the result? I don't know. I we could have been like very. Been per- I doubt it would have been perfect. I, you but... didn't get a touchdown though, did you? No. You got free. You got. Free, <laughs> I'm pretty sure we got the Kansas City score right. I'm uh... pretty sure you scored nine, and I scored near to 31 it must have been close anyway yeah, we we nearly predicted the score team, dead on i want to say this right now in, in the last just... podcast i did tell people to slap the money on uh tampa yeah i so, hope you listened guys if you, if you listen to me well done if you didn't listen to me in the future <laughs> don't do that but um yeah it was i watched it live it was pretty much a destruction tom brady 
absolutely showed up Patrick Mahomes. Gronkowski looked like a new player. He was all over that pitch. They were the WWE two stars legend for Gronkowski. The WWE 24-7 champion Rob Gronkowski. Please get it. Put some respect on his name. Put some respect on his name. The only WWE professional fighter to um, score a Super Bowl touchdown. Exactly. Legend of the game. And he Legend broke both I think games. he broke a record as well. I think he had like oh, I don't remember. It wasn't the most touchdowns, I don't think, in a Super Bowl. But it was it might have been actually. But it it was um I think it was the most consecutive catches or something. I don't know. But he, he Google. yeah, Gronkowski was insanely good that game, but you can't take it away from Brady. Which brings up the whole point of is Brady the greatest of all time? He's not my favourite because I was neither a Patriots or Tampa fan or anything. My favourite would be Peyton Manning because he's the player that got me into the sport. But he is undeniably the greatest of all time. He's won more Super Bowls than any other team himself. He that's, has that's won more Super Bowls yeah. than any other team. <laughs> he's won seven. <laughs> the closest are the Steelers and the Patriots, I'm pretty sure. At six each. So, like... It's just ridiculous. But you you can't deny how good this man is. And this just proves it. Going up against Patrick Mahomes, uh, the defending like the defending team, you know, the team that won it last year and completely showing them up. They had not the Chiefs crumbled. It was one of the worst performances I've ever seen in the Super Bowl by a team. And I mean the the, the Bucks made them look bad, but the Chiefs didn't do anything at all. They kept um, dropping balls, like failing catches that were, I wouldn't say easy, but for players of their caliber, should have been easy. Uh, they threw a few, I think Mahomes threw a few interceptions, uh, if I can remember. And it was just, you know, it was just a bit of a ridiculous game. And it was entertaining if you're a, if you're a Tampa fan or if you were on their side. Personally, I didn't want the Chiefs to win because I'm a Broncos fan and I don't want, want them to do well. Uh, but I didn't really care for the Bucks either, but it was an interesting uh, game and yeah, 31-9. Anything else? Uh, to say? Just, a, Go ahead. Uh, just the record was the most Super Bowls with one plus reception in NFL history. Okay. Is, that was the record that Gronkowski uh, broke as he's the only player to have five Super Bowls with more than one reception. Uh, five yeah. football appearances with more than one reception. That was the thing. Uh, there was, are was wrong. five other, sorry, there are seven other um, players. Only four of them were named in this, which is Jerry Rice, Andre Reid, John Stallworth, and Thurman Thomas, with three others all tied on four. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, anything else to say? You got an opinion? Did you watch it? <laughs> Um, no, as some of us have to work, Jimmy, so um could not nice stay up to watch it. Nice <laughs> um, yeah, uh, no. I was planning to at one point, but no. Um, but yeah, it was just... I don't think anyone really predicted apart from us, obviously, but um, I don't think <laughs> yeah. realistically anyone really predicted it. Uh, it was either going to be a Chiefs, a big Chiefs win, or a much tighter affair than it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was nice to actually have like, well, we've probably been greeted to two good Super Bowls in a row. Like the past two years have been quite exciting games after the very dull one of the year before. Where I mean, it, it was. Happened. I know a lot of people like to say, yeah, it was a really good defensive performance. It was. No one's taken away from that. But that game no was very to boring to watch. Performances. Yeah. <laughs> it's like watching a nil-nil draw in football. Like it could be the best defensive performance of your life, but people want to watch scores you want to watch goals you want to see see touchdowns yeah Yeah. you want to see touchdowns (laughs) so it's it's like (laughs) while they may may be good defensively people love offense let's be honest or good defense that works in tandem with a good offense so yeah and i think that's what happened here great offense and the bucks defense held them to everything you know they got uh free the only points that the Chiefs got were three um, field goals. Uh, one in the first quarter, one in the second, one in the third. So, like, and it's just ridiculous how crazy that is. And the fact that the fourth quarter had no scores at all, nothing on the board, 
it was just no one got especially a field goal, no one how, got a touchdown. Especially with how good the Chiefs have been the past few seasons with scoring. They just lost they lost the bottle. They lost the bottle. They they yeah. they couldn't handle the pressure. I guess. Uh, and I mean the the Bucks had the advantage of playing at home as well. So maybe you can put something down to that. But it's the Super Bowl, you know, you you you've got to perform and even with a home field advantage, like you shouldn't be letting so if, the Bucks if you run can't all over rise you like up that. To the occasion like that, then whether you're at home or not. <laughs> Yeah, you should be able to rise up to the occasion there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I think we pretty much pretty much said what we need to say. We'll be continuing, I guess, this format for most of the podcasts whenever we need to. Um, yeah, check out our social medias: Twitter, Facebook, uh, and YouTube. We didn't talk about um, <laughs> Brady being a goat. I did. I did. I talked about it. I okay. said he was the greatest. Well, the I didn't know if we're gonna discuss. I think more like. The sport in general, because there's a lot of Americans out there who are like, "Oh, Tom Brady's the greatest athlete ever." It's like, oh, shut up. If you're talking ever, mm, no, 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 no. I don't think you can say ever because some sports are just different gravy. If you're talking about the greatest American athlete of all time, he's got to be up there. He's definitely up there. Uh, Tiger Woods, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, but but <laughs> come on. Like Brady is, uh, you know, if you're gonna put him up for me personally, he probably is the greatest American athlete of all time, just in terms of what he's achieved in the sport and how he's still going today. You can say the same thing about Tiger Woods, like you said, but no, I think you can say that about Brady. But as Eli Manning said, if uh, Tom Brady is known as the greatest American there is, like great American athlete, and he was able to stop him from winning to a Super Bowl, then what does that make you like money? Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you beat the greatest, then you must be the greatest. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Sure. Why not? Why not? Marcus Rashford's better than Neymar because we beat fucking PSG and made him cry on the sidelines. No, but... that's, nah, that's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway. Um, yeah, we'll be continuing this going forward. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you in, if you preferred it, let us know. If you didn't, let us know. Let us what you let us know what you think about the new format. If yeah. it's better that we talk about more topics, but for not as long, or if you prefer like a single topic spoke about a lot, mm-hmm. could end up switching it up. Though if people ended up liking the longer ones of just single topic, could end up just doing one of those as well. But yeah. let us know what you think. Yeah, and uh, have a nice day. Welcome back to the Reverbian Podcast once again. My name is Sean. Wait, are we? We're no, it's not. Back. My name is not. 